This mini spaceman is part of the massive voodoo challenge and you had to put them in any diorama you wanted. I don't know about you, but I felt we could all do with a little bit of sunshine and maybe a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I designed the pot of gold myself, starting off in Fusion 360 before moving to Blender because I wanted to add all the coins. Then I printed it on my Elegoo Mars. Sadly, I had some resin trapped inside and the hole at the bottom when I'd hollowed it wasn't big enough for the light that I wanted to put in. Bit of a faux pas, but easily fixed with a Dremel. I also then Dremeled a hole into the liquid resin that was trapped and released it. What it did mean though, was when that resin was trapped, it caused more suction forces than normal and my sides had little ripples in them. So in this instance, I had to sand everything smooth in the hope of getting rid of those bumps. Resin 3D prints normally have supports, thankfully only a couple in this instance, so I got rid of them and sanded it smooth. My bowl, my pot of gold bowl, had unfortunately shattered. I think it's again the suction forces from that hollow not being hollowed. So I used some acrylic putty and filled the gap. And whilst I was at it, I added some more to the sides as well. And when that was dry, I sanded it again. A lot of sanding going on here and it is worth pointing out when I was just doing the resin, I wet sanded because it's safer for you. In this instance, you can't really wet sand acrylic putty as well. It tends to just soften it a bit. So I had to dry sand it. You should wear a mask when doing that because this dust is not nice. Next up was painting those sides. I wanted my pot of gold to glow a little bit with the light I'm gonna put inside. So I masked it all off before painting the sides with matte black automotive. It's just car primer or black spray paint. When it was well and truly dry, I remasked the black off and painted the gold. Now, normally I'd put gloss black under this, but I thought it would stop the light coming through from the glowing light I want to put in there. So I didn't. This gold was quite thick though and did stop a lot of the light. So it only really comes out on the sides of the coin, sadly. I'll put a list of all the paint colors that I used on the website, but this is glossy black going on to just the pot to make it light proof. There's going to be a light inside and I don't want it gleaming out through it. I wanted to get on with painting, so I used a hairdryer in between all the coats just to speed it all up. I wanted a nice colour to contrast with the gold, so I chose blue. This is a turquoise blue and the underneath of the pot is a royal blue. I blended the two together using some glazes of each colour over the other and eventually it was around the midpoint just where the light changed and then I followed it up with some clear Tamiya varnish. I'm going to grass the top but first I just needed to paint some brown on there in case anything showed through. Static grass is perfect for modelling grass. I used grass glue and covered the base. White glue would work as well here but grass glue gives you a little bit more working time. I started off with a two mil summer grass. It's got a bit of a mix of colors in it and I'll add loads of depth. You need a grass applicator to apply grass really, but for this small amount, a puffer bottle might work. I removed the excess and recovered it by turning it upside down and shaking it. You can still see there's some glue left in there, but I wanted clumps of the longer grass. So I used a brush to dab on more glue. Then I filled up the hopper with some green wild grass. It's about six mil long. The first one was about two mil long. So you'll get a real difference in height. Then it was just a case of turning the applicator on and shaking. I love this bit. It's like magic watching the grass go on. A quick shake upside down. And this is what it looks like. I touched up a few bits where I could do with a little bit more glue, especially on the corners and edges. I still felt it was lacking some longer grass around the pot, so I just kept adding layers until I was happy. And I added yet more clumps of the shorter grass around the edges too, and I called it done. Next up is the rainbow itself. The rainbow itself is incredibly simple. There's fluorescent pigments, there's a sheet of acetate over a template rainbow and there's some UV resin that you set with a UV torch. That's it. First up though, I held my pot in place and just cut out a rough rainbow the right size. I don't want a full rainbow here, I want to be a very small diorama. So just a few inches was enough. I made the top a little wavy and then I cut it out with a pair of scissors. 
I cleaned off all the black Sharpie marks just to make sure they didn't bleed into the colours and then I picked my pigments. I was lacking one colour so I'll have to mix that. But first up I started with the red. I tipped a little bit of pigment out onto just a sheet of acetate or whatever I had on the side. I ended up using train tickets in the end and I mixed it in. If I was doing this again, I would not put as much pigment in. It makes the rainbow quite dense and I don't think it needed quite as much. But I mixed up quite a big batch. It doesn't go off unless you use the UV light. Using the printed rainbow as a guide, I smeared on the red across one side and then cured it with a UV light. It takes a little while, but it doesn't take as long as you'd think. So just a few minutes and you've got a nice solid piece of resin that's coloured bright red. At this point, I remembered I was going to cut the bottom of the rainbow to fit over the pot. So I cut away the acetate until it fitted nice and snugly around the pot of gold. The rainbow actually remains removable, so it doesn't have to be that tight. And we are going to put the rainbow splash at the bottom as well, which will help fill in any gaps. Then I repeated the process for the other side of the acetate so that I've got red mixed UV resin on both sides. I then did the purple violet colour on the other side before using that template to add orange on both sides followed by yellow, then green. Now, I did have an issue on the purple, but on the green, it really happened. And you can see these little bubbles appearing. And what they are is the top is set and then the bottom has kind of, I don't know whether it's expanded slightly and forced itself out through the top in these little bubbles. It was most noticeable on the green, but it appeared on quite a few of them. I think next time I'd probably put slightly less pigment in and that might well get rid of the issue. I didn't have much choice so I carried on with the blue. The only colour I was missing was the indigo. Richard of York gave battle in vain but I didn't have a pigment for that colour so I mixed the purple and the blue together to get something in the middle. That went on like all the others and was set up with the UV torch. I have a UV curing chamber I built for my 3D printer, all those resin printers. So I put everything in there just to make sure it was well and truly set. I couldn't really think of a way to get rid of those bubbles of colour. And the darker colours had definitely bubbled more and had a slight matte texture to them. So I squeezed over the top just some clear UV resin so that it would all have a nice shiny gloss, fairly uniform surface. And then I put it back in the UV curing chamber for another few minutes. I did both sides and then tried it in place. Result. I wanted a rainbow splash at the bottom to just cover the gap and also so that the rainbow just didn't hit the pot of gold. To do that, I used cling film. I just put it on, scrunched it around the rainbow and then left it in place. At this point, I could actually remove the rainbow so that I could put all the messy resin on without getting any on my pot of gold. Now, I already had quite a lot of the resin left over. It doesn't go off without UV light. So if you keep it somewhere dark, you can keep using it for ages. And I wanted it to be slightly lighter so that those bits of the um, rainbow that have been quite heavy weren't quite as dark this time. So I just mixed in some extra resin and put it on to the cling film. At first, I tried adding all of the colours so that they just run into each other slightly, but they actually just ran downhill and it didn't look that great. To make sure I didn't get any resin where I didn't want it, I put a thin sheet of cling film over the pot and then just put my rainbow in place and turned on the magic UV light that will set it. And then I thought, oh, I'm about to set all my resin around the outside. So after this, I took it away from all those little resin pots of colour and made sure I kept it separate when I was shining UV light around. Once the first coat was set up, I wanted to add it in distinct colours the second time. So I added more on and set it in between each colour. It just meant, you can see here the greens run into the blue. It just meant that I could catch it before gravity had had a chance to make it run down too far. Then when every colour was on, I put it in that UV chamber again, just to make sure 
everything had set. And here it is. All I needed to do then was take it off and remove the cling film. It mostly came off OK, but because it's clear, um, you can just snip it away if it's an issue and it's been embedded as a fold. And then you just try it back in place. And hey presto, you have a pod of gold at the end of a rainbow. Now it was on to adding the light. Now this doesn't show as much as I wanted it to, but it still adds a little bit of effect. So I just hot glued it in place and I can reach inside and turn it on whenever I need to. Now this is the massive voodoo challenge and the whole point of the challenge is to put a mini spaceman on there. So I had three mini spacemen and there's three videos with different dioramas on and each of them have treated exactly the same. I cleaned them up. They were resin casts that I bought from Mr. Lee's Minis and they just needed their feet cleaning up, a little bit of cleaning up around the bottom, I hate to say, and around the feet where the supports had been. And then they were very, very nicely cast. So a little bit of scraping with a knife, a little bit of filing, a little bit of putty, and they were ready to paint. But first we needed some arms. So I Clean them up a little bit on the sprue because it's easier before cutting them off, firing them a bit more and then super gluing them in a suitable pose, which was pointing in excitement at the pot of gold. Sadly, my gluing wasn't very elegant, so I had to fill the gaps with some more acrylic putty, wait for it to dry before filing and scraping it smooth. Then finally, it was on to painting. I used Tamiya Fine Surface Grey Primer, followed by Vallejo Model Colour White and Black Grey. I did use this gloss back, I'll come back to that in a minute, but as soon as I started painting the white, I realised I could have saved myself five coats of paint just by spraying it with a white primer, not a grey primer. Lesson learnt. Once I built up the white, I moved on to layers and layers of grey. Now I started with the darkest colour and went light, and I started fairly thick and then got thinner as time went by. Now, I don't normally paint shadows, but in this instance, I felt I had to. For a start, it is a miniature painting challenge. And secondly, I'm putting them in quite a fixed diorama. If you come from a railway background like me and you don't really paint miniatures, you don't put light shadows on because your trains move all the time. So you paint them the colour they are in reality and allow your layout lighting to provide the shadows. That's what I've got used to. So this was still trying this new technique of painting shadows and highlights. For the thinner coats, I moved on to adding matte varnish rather than water. If you over dilute acrylic paints, they don't really set properly and you can end up with a lot of problems. So the final few coats were just neat white, but diluted with the matte varnish. And I just felt they were looking a bit gray and grungy. So I went through and just lightened everything up with the white. And you can see when you compare him to his friend who hasn't been whitened yet, who's on the right, that it has made him a lot brighter. Now I needed to fix those gloss varnish helmets. They just didn't stick. And it's a Vallejo paint. I don't know why it didn't stick. So I went for black Tamiya. This stuff's amazing and it's gloss straight off. And I just love the way Tamiya sets solid. So I went through and redid the black paint. I wanted to paint the gold reflection. So I used the same all clad lacquer. This is not easy to brush paint. I also put some on his tummy. Again, not easy to brush paint. It just flash dries far too quickly. So I ended up diluting it a lot with lacquer thinners and just putting some pale amounts on. I'm not sure it worked. I'm not sure gold was the right colour, but it does reflect what's in front of him. To make the visor as glossy as possible, I used Tamiya Clear and just put a coat over the top. Finally, I used some tacky wax to put him in place. Then it was just a matter of taking the photos. I don't know about you, but I think we could all do with a pod of gold at the end of the rainbow right now. 
this guy certainly found his treasure trove. If you enjoyed it, you know the drill. Subscribe, hit the bell button, check me out on Patreon, pop over to the shop on the website. You hear it at the end of every video. We still appreciate it when you do it. Otherwise, see you next time.